So before I start, my building block for EO is innovation. And, and it won't surprise you that I'm going to take three words to describe why. Because I think um, employee ownership is an enabling and inclusive uh, model which inspires people. And that's what leads to the innovation. So that's my block that's going to go up on the wall outside. So thank you, Martin. Um, and good morning to all of you. Uh, it's absolutely my great honor um, to welcome you here to the 40th um, employee, sorry, the 14th Employee Ownership Association Conference in our 40th year, and to the biggest gathering of employee ownership. And today we're celebrating a few firsts. You've already heard that the first one is today is our first time as a sellout conference. I think Ollie told me this morning there were 720 of you here from 220 different organizations. You're all very welcome, and I hope you have a fantastic couple of days. Um, the second first is that later on in this speech, I'm going to be announcing uh, the launch of some new services for the EOA. And finally, and possibly for the only time, I can officially say that I'm the warm-up act for Sir Charlie Mayfield. As you all know, employee ownership doesn't exist in a vacuum, and it's impacted by serious topics that are affecting the world in general, including the nature of work, expectations of business, and the changing shape of society. Charlie's going to speak about the global and national forces that are influencing business and employee ownership. So I'm going to focus on the recent changes that we've seen in the UK employee-owned sector and what that means to the EOA and to your membership. So firstly, and it's been mentioned already, I'd like to focus on the growth of the sector. The good news is we are seeing tremendous growth. 18% um, is what you saw on the slide earlier on. And the White Rose Centre has updated its stats to tell us that there are around about 400 employee-owned businesses in the economy now. And whilst SMEs and family-owned businesses are dominant in the sector, we're also starting to see a changing shape of the sector. So the top 50 UK employee-owned businesses stats that came out in the summer the smallest business in that table now has 403 employees. If you contrast that to 2014, when the same data was published, the smallest business then had only 143 employees. So you can see that many more businesses are attracted, larger businesses are attracted to employee ownership. And we are seeing lots of transitions, but undoubtedly, a Richer Sounds transition in the summer was a tipping point. And you will have seen, as I did, the absolute universal media endorsement of employee ownership. Every broad, uh, broadsheet and every tabloid journal covering it in a positive way. So the sector has started to move from niche to mainstream, but it's got a long way to go before it matures. In fact, there are just over 35,500 SMEs in the UK, between 50 and 249 employees. So we've got lots of opportunity still for more growth of this sector. The second area I want to focus on is how we have seen a, a growth in the relevance of employee ownership. So a year since we launched the ownership dividend, there's far greater awareness of employee ownership and its relevance to business is better understood. Specifically at the EOA, we've been working with partners like the Institute of Chartered Accountants for England and Wales, the uh, Federation of Small Business and the Institute for Family Business in order to develop understanding about the relevance of employee ownership amongst their members and in the case of the ICAW, amongst their members' clients as well. But there is still much more to do until we are fully to embed and amplify employee ownership through those partners. So therefore, this will remain a critical focus for the EOA moving forwards. And there are still gaps and inconsistency in the understanding, most notably amongst lenders and corporate finance specialists. And that's why we will be hosting next year a finance symposium with our member Unity Trust Bank to reach out to this really important audience. It's clear from the inquiries we receive into our office that it's still not the case that every accountant and law firm at a regional level fully understands the model or its potential. So that leads me on to the next point, which is about building capacity within the sector. Developing the skills of the professional services ecosystem continues to be a significant priority. 
And this has directly influenced our decision and our collaboration with Cooperatives UK to launch the One Million Owners campaign, which was mentioned earlier. Over the summer, Ed Mayo and I shared views and opinions on the challenges that both of our sectors face, the shared values that we have around employee and worker businesses sharing a stake and a say, and our shared objectives to mainstream employee and worker ownership. And that led to the One Million Owners campaign. Now, that campaign needs your voice. So if you've not pledged your, campaign, your support for the campaign, please do that online. Very easy to do. There's no money involved. And we have outlined in a clear policy ask to the government what we want of the next government in order to help us get to that point. And I'm delighted that in the last two weeks, we've ourselves moved forward in the campaign by announcing that we're about to appoint a project manager who's going to help us deliver that campaign. And in line with the ownership dividend, that's going to be targeted at a regional level. So that's working with local enterprise partnerships and uh, combined authorities and elected mayoral teams to really seek to enhance the ecosystem at a regional level of the capacity needed to grow this part of the economy. And lastly, of course, I must briefly speak about the political environment within which employee ownership sits. Because there is universal appeal um, for employee ownership, not one dissenting voice in all of the major political parties. However, there is a danger that it could get hijacked politically because the major parties have quite different views about how to create more employee ownership in the economy. On the one hand, we have Labour who want to mandate the Inclusive Ownership Fund, and on the other hand, we have the Conservatives who are happy to simply tweak some of the cu current tax legislation. And it's for that reason that the EOA has published its own national strategy, which we have been circulating and promoting amongst advisers and political audiences. And of course, we'll be doing more with that um, after the 12th of December. Because the important thing is that employee ownership stays non-partisan it becomes a cross-party issue. And it's not about ideological preference, it's about economic imperative. So partnerships are key, and our political influence in two. And lastly, I want to say that that's the reason the EOA board has taken the decision to provide strategic support to the new think tank that's dedicated to employee ownership called Ownership at Work. This is now a research partner of the EOA, and it's cre been created to develop new evidence and ideas on employee ownership. You may have seen its first paper published recently. Also to stimulate debate on the EO's, on EO's role in the economy, and to help fuel the sector's dramatic growth. So what does all of that mean to the EOA, your membership body? Well, like every business, the EOA has to respond to the changing marketplace. And in 2019, we experienced our highest number of inquiries into the EOA and the most number of members joining. We also experienced more of our members moving from exploring employee ownership to actually being employee owned. So that's led us to think about what our priorities have to be moving forwards. The first one is we need to become more efficient and smarter at how we deliver our services to you. And that's thinking about how do we integrate our systems, how do we improve our digital interfaces, and how do we create more personalization of service for you as our members. And the second thing is we need to consider how do we service different members' needs. Because what you need as an established employer-owned business and what you need as a business exploring employee ownership are quite different. Which leads me nicely in a nice little segue into the second announcement today, which is our announcement of our launch of some new services. We know that skills are critical in the economy, and indeed the link between skills in business and productivity has been well made by Be The Business. But we also know that the supply of bespoke employee-owned courses and training is not that high at the moment in the sector. So today, we are announcing the launch of EOA Learning Services. And we will have three products for you to engage with from this month. The first product, I'm delighted, is going to be launched by Grant Thornton and Activate Apprenticeships. And it is a leadership apprenticeship program focused on employee ownership and on supervisors and line managers and more experienced managers. 
The second program, launched by Telos and JGAD Associates, is a leadership succession program. And that's about providing the skills and talent needed for that very important leadership succession that comes alongside ownership succession when a founder owner is moving their business on. Both of those programs have been developed with the EOA. They're fully endorsed by the organization. And actually, many of you have contributed your ideas and thoughts to their development. And the last program is an EOA program, which is how to be an effective employee director or trustee, which is something that I know all of you are concerned with and will all have training needs around. If you've got an interest in any of those, can I suggest you swing by the EOA stand in the exhibition hall over the next two days, register your name, and we'll make sure you get some information about that. So, in summary, the progress in the sector has been substantial over recent years, and 2019 undoubtedly has been an amazing year. But there is lots more opportunity for growth, and there are many more SMEs and family-owned businesses that still do not yet understand the potential of employee ownership. Awareness is growing, but it's still too far top-down. And what we haven't done yet is regionalize that awareness through accountants and lawyers in order to build those local ecosystems. Understanding of the relevance is growing amongst funders, but still lacks consistency. And hence, we don't have any EO-specific finance products coming to the market yet. And we need to continue our political engagement and influence to ensure that employee ownership figures centrally in the next government's economic priorities. The EOA is changing and evolving for its next chapter and for its next 40 years to continue serving you, our members, connecting you with experiences, skills, and knowledge. Whilst at the same time, championing employee ownership, helping you celebrate your stories and your successes, and to campaign for more employee ownership in the economy as a way of socializing capital and demonstrating that business can do well and do good. Thank you.